Do you have an eight-month-old and you think you're maybe going through the eight-month sleep regression? You're in the right place. That's what we're going to talk about today. Hey, everyone. I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm a chiropractor by training, but really found my passion empowering parents to teach their little ones to sleep and parent confidently day and night as a sleep consultant. I'm the creator of the Helping Babies Sleep Method. Eight months. It's so much fun, right? They're into so many different things. You're getting motor leaps happening. Maybe you're getting a little bit of crawling happening or at least hovering on all fours. You're introducing them to all kinds of new solids. It is a fun stage, but then maybe sleep has gone a little bit off track. And why is that? Is there an eight month sleep regression? Here's the thing. Whenever you hear sleep regression, this is big. You're going to write this down because this is what I want you to remember. This will help you through all ages. Sleep regression means growth and distraction. Your child is growing physically by either getting teeth or neurologically by learning a new skill or a new concept, and that is distracting them from sleeping. That's what a sleep regression is. It does not mean that they can't sleep. It means that they're distracted. If we compare this to adult sleep, we have little sleep regressions all the time when we are stressed, anxious, or excited about something. You may wake up at 5 a.m., start thinking about, you know, your pending pregnancy, your delivery, your wedding, a big project at work, and that distracts you from relaxing back down into sleep. And that is a sleep regression. Now, if you think about teething, especially, if you've been talking to other parents, you may have noticed that teething happens at wildly different times for, for babies. I've had eight-month-olds who don't have any teeth, and then I have eight-month-olds who have a plethora of teeth. So how can we say it's eight months exactly? It can be hard to do. Ten years ago when I was starting out uh, with my own kids, there was no eight-month sleep regression. There was very particular times, like four months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months. Eight months was not on the radar. But now that everybody's Googling sleep issues, right, we are writing about the eight-month sleep regression because people are looking for this. You could have an eight-month sleep regression. It is likely related to two things. One, it's related to teething. So many kids have gotten their first bottom two teeth somewhere around six months, very average, and the top two then are coming in somewhere around eight months. That's very average, but like I said, wildly different times for teething. And how does teething cause a sleep regression? Well, when you have inflammation, which is gonna happen when that tooth is trying to erupt, inflammation causes swelling. Swelling puts pressure on your pain receptors, which sends a message to your brain that I am uncomfortable. This can often look like 5 a.m. wake-ups in the morning. Your sleep cycles are a lot shallower, they're not as deep, and they happen more quickly. And so often kids wake up at 5, 5.15, 5.30, and then they cannot relax back down into the next sleep cycle because they feel that discomfort that's accumulated overnight in their teeth. It can also present as short 30-minute naps when your child was having longer naps. This is the thing. If you've never had great sleep, it can actually be really hard to identify sleep regressions because it's still, you're still having multiple night wakings. We can help you with that inside of Helping Babies Sleep School if that's you. But in general, the average person who's been getting good long stretches of nighttime sleep will notice a sleep regression more easily because the wake-ups are unusual. So they'll be like, hey, that's not like you. You usually sleep a good 11 hours or maybe it's six and then a feed and then another few hours. Now you're waking up more frequently. I wonder what's bugging you. Hmm, what could that be? Teething can be a cause. The next one can be motor leaps. So around eight months, you will have already experienced probably a sleep regression related to motor leaps, which would have been rolling. Again, variability on when that happens, we can say average is around five months, right? So they roll onto their stomach and then they're stuck and then they cry and then you have to go in and flip them back over like a little piece of bacon. That happens. At this stage, it's usually more related to like hovering on all fours. A very common sign I see with motor leaps is a child being awake but content in the middle of the night. So just lying there, content, hanging out, and maybe then later they start to cry. And this could be after like 45 minutes because they are getting tired and frustrated. Maybe somebody should come help them. They were distracted. They are distracting themselves by all of their little thoughts, right? And again, this can happen at 5 a.m. as well when it's harder to go back to sleep because your sleep pressure is lower. So those are really the two main reasons for the eight-month sleep regression. Now, you might be asking, well, what can I do about this? Well, first of all, I just want you to remember the time heals everything. This too shall pass. It's just a matter of when. If you are thinking about the root issue with teething, it would be how can I help get rid of the pain? So that you want to talk to your physician about that. The second thing would be the motor leaps. How can I help with that? Well, at night, not really. If you have to make your child sleep, this is going to be a hard regression for you because you're trying to work against their little busy brain that's thinking about this new thing. You're trying to control them when really we cannot control our little people. 
But if you have an independent sleeper, a child that can be put down completely awake and puts themselves to sleep, you can check them out on the monitor. Oh, I see that they're hanging out, but I'm going to put a pillow over my head and try and catch some Z's for a while until maybe they need a little bit of assistance. Or you know that they can put themselves back to sleep. Obviously, giving them as much time during the day to work on those skills can be helpful. I also actually like a sleep sack in the night because it does prevent their ability to want to practice at that time of day. Yes, we want them to practice those motor skills, just not necessarily at night. So those are the two main reasons for the eight month sleep regression. And you would address those by working on motor skills during the day and potentially offering pain medication if it was appropriate for your child at night. But know that this too shall pass. Now, if you've never had great sleep and you're not even really sure if this is a regression, you're still responsible for making your child sleep, that's where we can help you inside of Helping Baby Sleep School, where we help parents understand sleep needs, understand that sleep actually is a learned habit, work on the timing of sleep and feeding, using food for fuel rather than to soothe, and responding. So if I take away that known way of falling asleep, how can I offer comfort to the frustration that may come as they're trying to learn something new when they are tired? That's all inside of Helping Baby Sleep School. I'll put the link down there below. But if you're looking for other tips, don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a baby sleep trip.